to the moon and back. China sending a robotic spacecraft to the moon. The idea is to collect lunar samples and bring them back down to Earth to be the third country to accomplish the feat after the United States and the Soviet Union years ago. In fact, the last attempt was made more than 40 years ago. Let's bring in the theoretical physicist, Michio Kaku, to uh, break down the significance of this. Good to see you again, sir. Um, you know, if you, if you don't go to the moon for 40 years and people say, well, maybe there is no significance, maybe it's not important, uh, what do you say? Well, first of all, let me congratulate the Chinese. They are following the United States step by step. And as you pointed out, they're still 30, 40 years behind the United States, but they're leapfrogging into the future by taking shortcuts. They're squeezing their program as they follow the West. They have a probe reaching Mars in a few months, and instead of having an orbiter, then a lander, and then a rover, it's a three-in-one mission. One mission with an orbiter, a lander, and a rover to explore Mars. And so the Chinese are methodically following the West, but they're taking shortcuts along the way. All right. So we don't have to worry about an old-school space race like we had with the U.S. and the Soviet Union years ago. The Chinese can't keep up, is, is your point. Well, yes, but we do have to worry about the arms race on the planet Earth. Reaching the moon has minimal military value. It takes three days to go to the moon. A war on the Earth, a space war, would be fought in a matter of hours, not days. However, we do have to worry in the sense that hypersonic drones are the next weapons of choice by the superpowers. The Russians have already announced last year that they have an operational hypersonic weapon. They're actually ahead of the United States in this matter. And the Chinese, not to be outdone, have stated that they, too, are working on hypersonic drones. And so just because we're reaching for the moon, that's a peaceful venture. On the Earth, the superpowers are still hedging their bets on weapons. Right. Uh, that Space Force announcement that we had at the time, you know, some people blew it off, said, oh, this, this is not important. But, you know, I think we spoke to you at the time, and you explained to us why it was. Uh, what would you say about it now? Well, you realize that we control, directly or indirectly, over 50 percent of the satellites in outer space. If a war were to break out, we would suffer the most. And so at the very basic minimum, a space force would basically protect our assets, our economy, telecommunications, recon. All of that is done in outer space. And these are assets that have to be protected. Let's hope, however, that it doesn't lead to an uncontrolled arms race. That would be a negative implication of a space force. No doubt it would be very negative. Um, you know, to, to bring it back to something I think people kind of identify with on a personal level, what do you make of all of these uh, private citizens, Elon Musk and others, that want to go to Mars? <laughs> That's uh, kind of a, a life's goal uh, of theirs, it seems. I mean, is that going to happen? And um, <laughs> you want to go yourself at some point? I mean, what do you make of all this? Well, we need a vision for exploration. The previous vision was beat the Russians, beat the Russians. Well, we beat the Russians, yeah. and then we sort of lost that vision. And now billionaires are coming in with their own vision. For Elon Musk is to create a multi-planet species because the dinosaurs, the dinosaurs did not have a space program. And that's why the dinosaurs are not here today. For the richest man in the world, uh, the head of Amazon, uh, Mr. Bezos, he wants to create the Earth as a jewel, a celestial park, with all the heavy industry and polluting done in outer space. So he, too, has a vision, a vision of the Earth as a celestial park. And so this has revived interest in the space program, creating a second era of space exploration. So I think that one day we will have tourists go to the moon. In fact, Elon Musk is already selling tickets for tourists to go to the moon. And I think our grandkids, we have the option of honeymooning on the moon. Hmm. <laughs> honeymooning on the moon. Very good. I see what you did there, Michio Kaku. See, he he'll, he'll be here all week, by the way. Thank you, sir. It's great to see you again. Um, the great Michio Kaku there on space exploration and a whole lot more.